Hi, for this example, what we are going to do is we are going to construct a 90% and a 95% confidence interval for the given situation. So in 40 randomly selected seawater samples, the mean sodium chloride concentration was 23 cubic centimeters per cubic meter, and we are going to assume the population standard deviation is 6.7 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. Knowing what confidence interval to use is the hardest part of this specific, um, or when you're trying to generate a confidence interval. So to help us figure out which one we should use, we want to look for some key words. The first thing that we notice is that we are dealing with a mean or a sample mean. So we're dealing with a sample mean. So with this, there are two intervals that can be used for the mean. One of the intervals is called a Z interval. The other is called a T interval. And the difference between the two is whether or not you know the population standard deviation. So for this one, since it says we know population standard deviation is 6.7, that tells me that sigma is known. Since sigma is known, remember that sigma is just the population standard deviation, so the notation for that is sigma. Since sigma is known, and we have a random sample, and it tells us that our sample size is 40, so n is greater than or equal to 30 since n equals 40. This right here are the conditions for a z interval for the mean. This one is just called a z interval. So for this specific one, we are going to do what is called a z interval. We use a z interval anytime the population standard deviation is known. Most of the time, this is not going to be the case. Most of the time, if we don't know something about the population mean, we probably don't know the population standard deviation. So of the two intervals for um, the confidence intervals for means, the Z interval is used less frequently. But since we have the conditions for the Z interval, let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to write the formula down, and for all of these, I'm going to show you how to do hand calculations and also how to do this um, in the TI-84 and TI-Inspire graphing calculators. Just make sure that you know that whatever class that you're in, some professors are very, very, or some professors or teachers are very picky about showing work. So if you need to show the work, I will make sure that I show work um, regardless of which method that I'm using. So for this, depending upon the textbook that you are using, the formula that you are going to use, um, like I said, there are different textbooks, so I'm putting down two different formulas. They both mean the same thing. Um, some textbook companies use X bar minus E, and they say that the population mean is in between that and X bar plus E. where E is equal to ZC, which is Z of our confidence level, um, times sigma divided by the square root of N. This is what I know that Pearson uses in their textbook, um, in their, sorry, in Larson's edition, in some other textbooks that I have seen, and so I would just refer to your textbook to see which one you are using. Um, in others, they use X bar plus or minus Z star times sigma divided by the square root of N. So some textbooks use Z star instead of ZC. They mean the same thing. All they represent is the Z score for that level of confidence. For this one, like I said, we're going to generate both a 90% confidence interval and a 95% confidence interval. Remember that a 90% confidence interval, just to kind of show you what's going on here, is remember that once the central limit theorem kicks in, then our sampling distribution is going to generate um, something that's roughly normal. And so 90% confidence 
means that 90% of the area is in between those two values. So there are several options for coming up with this ZC. Um, one is to realize that since I have 90% in between, remember that these areas um, on the outside would be the same. So the ZC or the Z star, depending upon your textbook, um, would be here. And so that tells us that we have 10% total on the outside. So if I wanted to use the standard normal table, the um, Z table, what I would look for is that this area down here is half of that, so 0 0.05. So I would look for 0 0.0500 in the area and then see what Z-score corresponds to that. Or I could also look for 0.95 because from here, the 5% plus the 90% gives me 95% by here. To me, if you are using tables, the easiest table to look at is the T-table. So what I have here is I have a T-table, and depending upon your textbook, this could look slightly different. For this one, it tells you the cumulative probability, so that's up to the point. Um, the one tail, whether you have two tails, those are used if you are doing hypothesis testing. But what we want to look for is down here, it gives us our confidence level. And if you look at this very last row of all T-tables, they give you the Z-score that corresponds. So since we're looking for the Z-score that corresponds to 90% confidence, we would use 1.645. So for a 90% confidence interval, our Z-C or our Z-star, so I'm going to just put 90% so that you know which one we're creating here. We're going to write down all the important information for the formula. And I'm going to use ZC just because the textbook that I'm teaching from currently uses this, um, but it means the same thing as Z star. Remember that ZC for the 90% confidence, we just looked it up in the table, was 1.645. Sigma was our population standard deviation, which was given to us as 6.7. And that was in the original problem. I'm going back up to the original problem. This is Sigma. Um, the sample mean is the 23. Okay. And our sample size, it told us, was 40. So those are all of the things that you need in order to use this formula. So again, with this, depending upon... Um, the textbook that you're using, I'm going to use this one for the first one, and then I'll use the second one for the 95% confidence. They're the same thing. This is just the shorthand notation of it instead of writing it out both ways. Um, so what we would do is if we're using X bar minus E, what we are saying is that the population mean, we are hoping that our interval captures the true mean of the population. So we would plug in our values that we have. We found that X bar was 23. Remember that E is ZC, so I would do minus 1.645 times the standard deviation, which is 6.7, divided by the square root of the sample size. And then we would do the same thing for the other side. The only difference is we would add instead of subtract. Okay, um, I already plugged these values into the calculator so that you guys don't have to see me do this, but I would just plug this entire thing into my calculator. And when I do that, I end up with 21.257. And the upper was 24.743. So the most important part of this is interpreting your decision in context so that you can tell somebody what this means. So we can say with 90% confidence, and it's always important to list the context of the original problem. So let's go back up and look at the original problem. Um, we're dealing with seawater, and we're looking at the, cubic, the, the sodium chloride concentration um, of the seawater. So we want to make sure that when we are interpreting that we include that in our answer. So we would say with 90% confidence, the mean 
sodium chloride concentration of seawater is between and this is where you just list your findings 21.257 and 24.743 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. Okay, um, so with this, like I said, when you are telling this, you're saying what level of confidence your decision has, and you're reporting what you're talking about. So we're saying the population mean, so out of all seawater content from wherever this was taken, that the sodium chloride concentration is between 21.257. Remember with a confidence interval, we could have had a bad sample that actually misses the true population mean. So that's why we say what level of confidence that we had. So we're gonna repeat this for a 95% confidence. So again, the 95% confidence means that 95% of the information is in between. We're looking for um, what values that gives us. And so if we set this up, we're, our z-score is going to change this time. Our z, and like I said, I'm going to use the other formula this time. So the z-star is the same thing as z-c. Just for those of you that have a different textbook. Um, sigma is 6.7. That does not change. The x-bar does not change. And the sample size does not change. Every time your level of confidence changes, your z-score does change. So with this, I'm going to pull back up my table. This time we're using 95% confidence, and we can see that our ZC is 1.96. And there are many, many different adaptations of the table. So if your table looks slightly different, um, just make sure that you're finding it somehow. You can also use technology to find this. That's the one thing with statistics is there's a lot of different ways of doing the same thing. And so I'm trying to reach everybody, and that's why I'm doing different um, formulas. So like I said, for the last one, I used the first formula. For this one, I'm going to use the second formula. Um, and basically with this, it's the exact same thing. The plus or minus just means to separate it out into two things, that you have to do both of them. And then we're going to do our Z star and our sigma divided by the square root of n. And so if we plug in those values, we would have 23 plus or minus 1.96 times 6.7 divided by the square root of 40. And for this formula, typically, instead of writing it in this notation, typically what we do is we just put our lower value. And like I said, I would just type in 23 minus the 1.96 times 6.7 divided by square root of 40 and then do the same thing with the plus. Um, but I already found those values for you, so I got 20.9236 and then 25.0764. And really, you're just look at how many places it rounds to. I always go with more just because of the fact that the more I have, the more precise it is. Um, and so with this, we would explain it the same way. We can say that with 95% confidence... The mean sodium chloride concentration of seawater is between twenty point nine two and 25.08. I just abbreviated on this one or shortened it, approximated it a little bit more. Um, cubic centimeters per cubic meter. So with this, this is just to recap what we did. Remember that we use a Z interval if we are given the population standard deviation. Most of the time you don't know that, so this is the least used of the confidence intervals. 
As always, thanks for watching. Please continue to check out all of my other videos that I have. Um, they continue to grow all the time. So if you don't see what you need, message me. Let me know what you need. As always, thanks for watching.